Modern Sudanese Poetry My husband works his fingers into the knot muscled against my spine, and my dead stay dead, my hair a knotted cursive language, my ligature, my grief barely literate, my amulets knotted around my neck and wrists, my language, my language, cursive and silent, glottal and knotted and scarring the cheeks of my dead, adorning the hair of my dead, tallow in their braided hair. I read the books in translation, where is the poem, and circle every word I know, acacia, lupin, sandalwood, and ash. They ululate, my dead. They squat like brides over clay pots of smoke, a yoke suspended in each open eye. And some, in truth, are not dead, my dead. And I am who is lost, who is not counted among the living. The poem is not owed me. I was wed in all the colors of my dead, the reddening, the borrowed gold. I wrote the poem in translation. I wrote the poem in the loophole. I wrote the poem in cursive. I snarled it. I picked apart the threads and wove a shroud. I was wed in it. I unfastened. I broke my fast with apricots, furred like the ears of my dead. I looked laterally for ancestors. I descended left and right. I read the book in Arabic, knew each letter and its sound, and did not recognize the words for tallow, for ululate, my dead, my languages, my ligatures, smoke in my loosened hair. From my friends in reply to a question after David Ignatow. I'm okay, and of course, I'm not, but I go through the motions. I wake up to the alarms howl, even when the word in my body is no. I dress in livid colors. I blacken the hairs of each eyebrow. I bake and braise and pickle. I write and read and lose hours to the blur of the television. I sit for hours in the bath, my skin puckering. I don't know if I'll ever go home again. I don't know who I've seen for the last time. The Arabic comes back to me in streaks of paint, verb forms and vocabularies I may never again have occasion to use. My days smudge into one another and it's not that I am afraid. It's as if I am watching it all happen below and I am somewhere above the room, wondering if the rice is burning. I am somewhere above the room, watching my new aches, watching the news as if I am reading it in a novel. I look up the names of people I knew in childhood, learn their new and angular faces, their faraway lives. My grandfather pixelates into a smile and I work my creaking muscles to replicate it. I do not ask if we will ever meet again. I do not ask him to read to me or for anything that will make me long. I dull it with sugar and oil, with cooking shows, with sleep, I sleep 12 hours each night, and in my dreams I am fleeing a war. In my dreams I am touching the faces of my friends. We are each one of us touching, and even in the dream we are afraid. In memory of Kamal Brathwaite. I sat by the lake and ate five tiny oranges and every strand of flesh and pith was my teacher. I grew warm and soft in the sun, and from this ripening made a poem to search for my teacher. I hear in every syllable its older drum. For this first part of my life, my ancestor was alive. My ancestor was kind, and my ancestor was my teacher. I learned music as the bright flesh of the poem. I learned percussion as its pith. I learned to listen to my people speak and harness my many mouths to write, my many mouths to music, my people as my teacher. I want badly to write well. I want badly for my teacher to remain or return, to explain again about the drum, draw a circle for me to stand inside. I want more than I dare write. I want more than I understand. I want porous borders to the other world, to part and reveal him there my teacher. I want the lake and its secrets. I want enormous things, the audacity for words previously not mine, since poured from my softer places. 
I know enough to believe the miracle of my faith, not resurrection and not water, but the book. I want badly to explain something about music, something exact and pure, but what is more polluted than language? Language hollowed to an instrument by my selfish grief. You were enormous as a god and you were kind to me. And from that brief overlap, I sit down every time to write, hands fragrant with pith and peel. I want to grow larger than my morning, my ancestor beside me on the long walk to the poem, the long walk around the lake, and now I will begin again, visited in sleep and here by my teacher. Solidarity Poem for Chelsea. Wherever you exist, I believe in the existence of mint leaves, of silk, of air bluing clean as the tear gases clear. I believe we will live to meet again, and I believe the breath in your throat fills as well my own lungs to fight and live again tomorrow. A memory of us for Bianca. When I think of us, I think of the lake water near Longtown, what might not technically constitute a lake, but I prefer that word for the open mouth of its vowel, how it called us to its throat and held us there, in the sun, the high points of our faces slick with light, and its arc around our shoulders, the soft gathering of flesh around our knees, the lone chair we found near the shore where we took turns posing, jutting out an eloquent hip, cackling in the bright language of flowers for whom I downloaded an app and learned their names, Beautyberry, Yarrow, Cornus Florida, Black-Eyed Susan, and you, and you, my bright hibiscus, my every color. 